yeah. So, today we will discuss in this lecture the derivative of the function at a point as well as on the interval and also the mean value theorem, differentiability, differentiable. differentiable t or derivative of the function derivative of the function f x of real variables that is let f x be a real variable let f be a real valued function define over the interval say a b over the closed interval say a b. Then the function f x is said to be differentiable differentiable at a point say x naught belonging to the interval a b belonging to the interval a b if the limit of this function f t minus f x naught divide by t minus x naught limit t tends to x naught if this limit exists and finite exist and finite of course finite in case infinite uh, we say uh, if the limit is infinite derivative then the differentiability uh, we can also discuss the case of infinity later on only ok. So, let us say just exist then it is denoted by it is denoted by f prime x naught or we also say d over d x f x at a point x equal to x naught that is also a notation to use the derivative at this point. Now, here if the point is coinciding with A or B, then in that case we have a different concept. Now, when we say the limit of this exist, that is 1, if this limit exists means the existence of 1 means that both the limit, both left hand and right hand limit limit must exist at a point x naught which is in the open interval a b which is in the open interval a b and and both are equal both are equal then we say the derivative of the function exists at the point at the coronal point at x naught is equal to a we consider <coughs> only the right hand limit that is we consider the limit t tends to x naught uh, say x naught is a. So, here t tends to a a plus f of t minus f of a over t minus a. So, this is an interval a b we will look only this side the point which are approaching to a from the right hand side right hand side of a. So, this point t a plus so right hand limit of this if it exists if exist then we say the derivative of the function at a point a. Similarly, the derivative at the point b that is uh, at the end points this is the end point interval means limit 
t tends to b minus f of t minus f of b divided by say t minus b okay when b tends to t tends to b minus so if this limit is, we are taking the point this is b and we are approaching towards this side left of the b all the points are taken in consideration which are left to b and at this point we are taking the image of this when t tends to v minor then we say the function has a limit at the point b learned so if the function f is continuous uh, if the function f is continuous at every point of the closed interval a b including including at the end points at end points <coughs> then we say <coughs> the function f x is differentiable over the closed interval a b similarly we say the function f sorry if f is differentiable not sorry it, it is differentiable differentiable at every point of the interval including end points then we, similarly a function f is said to be differentiable over the in open interval a b if it is differentiable at each point it at every point of the interval a b like this so we can extend this uh, definition to that side now using this definition one can easily show that if f x equal to 1 uh, f x equal to x the derivative will be 0 if f x equal to x then the derivative of this function will be 1 in general if f x is x to the power n the derivative will be equal to n x n minus 1 which can be used uh, which can be proved directly with the help of this results. So, the uh, all the polynomials functions all polynomials are differentiable functions. R differentiable function for each x belongs to R. Then polynomial P x, they are all differentiable function. Then trigonometric functions, like sin x, cosine x, tan x, these are all differentiable functions in the dom in its their domain, differentiable in their domains. Okay, like this. So these are all example which is just uh, results which we know uh, in the calculus the differentiability of a very uh, functions and formulas for it. So we are not going in detail for that, but this. Now interesting result is that every differentiable function must will be a continuous function. That is, so let f f be defined on the closed interval a b on the closed interval a b if f is f is differentiable if f is differentiable at a point at a point say x belonging to the interval a b then f is continuous f is continuous at x okay the proof is just simple okay let us we want the continuity so let us take the point t which goes to is okay x. so take f of t minus f of x this can be written as f of t minus f of x over t minus x into t minus x where the t is different from x. So, obviously, this is well defined. Now, as limit t tends 
2 goes to x. This gives the derivative f prime x by definition and this part will give the 0. So, total will be 0. Therefore, limit of f t when t tends to x either from the left hand side or from the right hand side if this limit exists means it both will be equal. So, it will always give the derivative and this will go to 0 whether we approach t from the uh, t to x from the left or right. So, this will always be when t tends to x the f t will be equal to f x that is the limit exists and equal to the value of the function at the point where the limit is required. This implies the function f is continuous at the point x. Okay. So, we have discussed this um, thing the differentiability and for the differentiability just we need only the functions to be well defined in this and so what is required now if you look that that this example shows or this result shows that continuity is a necessary condition for a function to be differentiable because every differentiable function we are getting continuous. Okay. Uh, so, continuity comes automatically when the function is differentiable. So, it is a necessary condition for the functions to be differentiable is it not. Then we say the converse of this. So, uh, as a remark or not the continuity of the function f x is necessary condition condition for a function f to be differentiable of differentiable over the a b or at any point or at any point. any point x belongs to a b. However, this condition however, continuity of the function f is not a sufficient condition for a function f to be differentiable for example if we look the function fx which is equal to mod x the function the curve of this uh, function is like this x is 0 it is 0 when x is positive then it by equal to x when x is negative by equal to minus a so we are getting again this one so, this is the graph for mod x. Now, it is very smooth curve, it is a continuous curve. In fact, the function f x is continuous everywhere, continuous say everywhere. Uh, I just take the interval for my convenience is 1 to 1, including at the point x equal to 0. The reason is because suppose I want to test at the point 0, what is the limit of the function f x when x approach to 0 from positive side? The limit of this is nothing but what? f x is x. So, it is x f x is s and then limit x tends to 0 from positive side. This is the same as limit s tends to 0, 0 plus s which is 0. And if you look the limit of this function f x when x tends to 0 from the negative side, then we say it is the limit x, x tends to 0 because all negative. So, it is uh, uh, x is uh, minus mod of x is minus x. Okay. So, this is minus x, x tends to 0 that is x equal to x minus h. So, we can write limit x minus h a negative quantity and then h tends to 0, x is 0. So, we get again it is 0 and the value of the function is equal to f 0. So, limit exists, limit of the function f x when x tends to 0 is 0, 
this is the same as f of 0. So, function is a continuous function at 0. So, so function f x which is mod x is continuous at x equal to 0, but it is not differentiable, but it is not differentiable at x equal to 0, because the reason is if you find the limit of this function f x minus f 0 divided by x minus 0 as x tends to 0 from the positive side, what we get limit f x when a positive side is mod x min, mod x means uh, is simply x only. So, it is uh, nothing but the x only because it is positive minus 0 uh, and then divide by x and x tends to 0 plus 0 plus. So, this is 0 plus means when x is positive mod x equal to x. So, limit comes out to be 1. When x tends to 0 minus 0 minus the f x minus f 0 over x minus 0 this is the same as <coughs> x minus uh, so uh, f x equal to mod x when x is negative. So, it is minus x minus 0 divided by x when x tends to 0, but that comes out to be minus 1. So, what you are getting is the right hand limit comes out to be plus 1, left hand limit comes out to be minus 1. Therefore, limit of this function f x when x tends to 0 does not exist. Sorry, f x f minus f 0 over x minus 0 this does not exist. That is the derivative of the function at a point 0 does not exist. So, function is not differentiable. It means the next continuity is no longer the sufficient condition. Okay? Just by looking the function is continuous, you cannot say the function must be a differentiable function. No, but it is a necessary that is if a function is not continuous, we cannot talk about the differentiability of the function. Function cannot be a differentiable if it is not at all continuous there. So, that is a very important result for that. Then just like a limit case, we have proved that uh, in case of the limit if uh, all continuity, if f and g are continuous, the addition of the two function is also continuous, subtraction is continuous, multiplication of the two continuous function is kind of like this. So, similar results here also hold for differentiable functions. So, the results are in the form. Let suppose f and g are defined. are defined f and g are defined on the interval say a b close interval a b and are differentiable <coughs> at each point x belongs to a b. Then f plus g f minus g f g f g and f y g are differentiable are differentiable at x and 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 the values of the derivative this x is the same as a prime x plus g prime x b f g derivative at a point x is the derivative of the first function f x multiply by the second this is the product of the derivative of two function. So, derivative of the first function multiply by second plus the first function into the derivative of the second. Similarly, when we say the derivative of the ratio of the two differentiable function at a point x, x is the uh, denominator g x 
into the derivative of the numerator f prime x minus numerator into the derivative of the denominator divide by the square of the denominator provided the function g is not 0 uh, in uh, in at a new point where the differentiality is tested in this interval. So, let us see the proof is uh, just uh, one or two proof let us see a is obvious that follows by definition right definition we can just use it thus part b you just construct let h equal to f g suppose this function then consider this difference h t minus h x. Now, this can be written as f t then g t minus f x uh, g x and then plus g x into f t minus f x. Now, you just see that g f t g x and f t g x is subtracted. So, uh, subtracted in addition, so this will be 0 here in okay? and rest will be we are just uh, uh, taking h t is means f t uh, g x here here h of t means f of t g of t. So, h of x means f of x g of a where this means like. Okay. So, just is balance. Now, divide by as t is different from x. So, divide by t minus x. So, when you divide by t minus x, okay, what you are getting is f t g t minus g x over t minus x plus g x f of t minus f of x divide by t minus x and then let t tends to x let t tends to x. Now, what is the right hand side? The right hand side is when t tends to x f of t will go to f of x because f is already giving to be f is giving to be a differentiable function. So, it must be a continuous at the point x. So, when you take the t uh, x is here and this is the interval. So, either t is this side or maybe t is this side function is continuous. So, f of t limit of f of t will be f of x. So, this will be and this ratio g t minus g x over t it is also given the function g is differentiable function at any point. So, at a arbitrary point x it is differentiable. So, this limit will be equal to g prime x because t tends to x and this is g x and this will be f prime x and this will give the derivative of the function at a point x. So, this proves the b part. C portion to prove the c let us consider h to be f y g where h of t means f t by g t this is the meaning. Okay. Now, consider this uh, h t minus h x divide by t minus x just uh, and that manipulate the term. So, what you are getting is uh, h t means g t and g x will come. So, it is basically f t by g t minus f x by g x. So, when you take the LCM then you are getting g t g x outside and inside we are getting h g x g x into f t minus f x f t minus f x and this t minus x take it here then plus uh, sorry minus f x into g t minus g x divided by t minus x. Now, you see t minus x suppose outside then all these things are adjusted you can just say this g x g x f x and f x g x both get cancelled and rest of the things will come from here. So, s t goes to x s t tends to x 
the this one will give as g x. So, g x square and this one will give g x and then this is the limit of the f at the point x derivative of f at the point x because this limit ratio of this limit give the derivative minus f x into the derivative of g at a point x and this and this will give the derivative of the function h at means derivative of by g. So, that result follows. Okay. So, these are all fun, uh, fundamental things and we can use it for getting the derivative of various type of functions. Now, for the composite functions also the similar result for as we have in case of continuity just like a function f is continuous at certain point and g is also continuous at the point f of p where the image of point where the function is continuous then f composition g is continuous at a. So, just like a continuity the same result follows for differentiability. So, so <coughs> suppose f is continuous on uh, the closed interval a b and let f prime x f prime x exist f prime exist at some point at some point say x of a b belongs to a b g is defined g is defined on an interval i interval i which contains which contains the range of f the range of f and g is and g is differentiable at the point f x at the point f x. Okay. Now, if h of t equal to g of f t g of f t for t lying between this a to b then then g h is differentiable differentiable at x and and the derivative of this is equal to the uh, derivative of g with respect to this f x and then f with respect to x. Now, remember here uh, I will just explain uh, here we say um, not when we say g days of f x it means we are differentiating this g with respect to f with respect to x and then f with respect to x then f with respect to x. So, and f dash x is d f over d x. So, when we are saying the h dash x it means we want to differentiate this composite function g of f x this composite function we want to differentiate with respect to x. So, since it is a composite function so, uh, g is a function of f. So, first we have to differentiate with respect to that composite function and that composite function with respect to x that will be the idea for it. Okay. So, that is the um, value for this. Okay. So, we get um, suppose for example, let me see just one thing suppose for example, I say the h function h of x equal to cosine of x square say suppose I take this then f x is x square g is cosine function. So, when you differentiate this h with respect to x you will define cos 
with as if x square is t a function of t then cos of as a function t is the sign minus sign uh, derivative of cos is minus sign x square and then x square will be differentiated with respect to x so that will give 2 x so that is the composition okay so this is all now let's see the proof of it okay let y is equal to fx y is equal to fx okay now since function fx is continuous uh, as well as differentiable it is given f is continuous on a and derivative exists at this point so by definition of the differentiability of the function uh, fx we can say so by the definition of the derivatives of the derivative we have f t minus f x this is equal to t minus x into f prime x plus u t plus u t where u t tends to 0 as t tends to x u t tends to 0 it tends to 0 and t belongs to a v let us see what is the meaning of this. When we say the function is differentiable that is the meaning of this is the function f prime x exists. It means it is the limit of this f of t minus f of x f of t minus f of x divided by t minus x when t tends to x is it not. So, when t is approaching to x then this ratio the limit of this ratio exists and we are denoting by a prime x. It means the difference between this ratio and a prime is very very small when t is sufficiently is close to x or in other words if you say that if I multiply this t minus x to the or we can say that this ratio f of t sorry this one f of t minus of this over t minus x over t minus x is this. So, if I remove the f signal t minus x then this is equivalent to uh, the derivative of the function at a point x plus some number say u t I am taking u t it may be f signal and this u has a property it goes to 0 as soon as t approach to x. So, when you take the t approach to x if this part is tending to 0. So, this will coincide with the limit of function will coincide with the derivative. Okay. So, the same thing I am rewriting in this way that f of t minus f x is t minus x times this thing. <coughs> okay. So, this is what we get. Now, similar thing we can write it for our function g. Now, g function is defined over an interval i in which the range of f lies. So, similarly, so let it be equation 1 and similarly for g t, g of s minus say g of y because a function uh, g is continuous at the f x, f is continuous f is differentiable at x. So, g f x is differentiable g is differentiable at f x. So, y is equal to f x I am writing the g of f x here which is s minus y into g prime of y plus a term v s and the v s tends to 0 where, where the v s goes to 0 as s tends to y s tends to y okay, and s belongs to the interval i in which the function f the range of the f lies means this is our say here. So, the function f is defined over this domain this is the domain. So, x is here we are getting f x here. The function g is defined over an interval 
I am in place of interval I am just writing this i where the range of this f is contained. So, when you take the g g then g is defined as g of f x is it not this defined and function f is differentiable at x and g is also differentiable at f x. So, we can write it this as this form okay? that is what gets to it. So, this can be where t belongs to where t uh, is this. So, let it be equation 2. Okay? Now, suppose in this uh, uh, now we wanted the function h t this is we wanted to show to show that h function which is a composite function h of t which is g of f t is differentiable is differentiable is differentiable at x this we wanted. So, write down the relation h t minus h x. So, consider consider h t minus h x. Okay? Now, h t minus h x means h is this function g of f t. So, we can write this as g of uh, f t this is h minus h x means h t and h x means h x means g of f x this thing. Okay. Now, replace this uh, s by f t because s is a point in the interval i t f is a function defined over the domain and t is a point in the interval a b. Okay, so, replace s by f t. So, when you replace s by f t, what you are getting is this g of uh, f t minus this. Now, let us see uh, g of this if I uh, replace this in the in equation 2. So, if we replace let this be taken in equation 2. So, from the equation 2 what we get? 2 is g s minus g y is it not? So, g s minus g y g of f t minus g y g of y means g of f x. This is our uh, and which is nothing but this part s t minus f x which is the same as h t minus h x. So, if I replace this a s by f t then from here we are getting this this one, but the right hand side of this gives you s minus y. So, s will be equal to what g of f t. So, this is equal to g of f t minus minus g of f x that is the same thing which I, I written. Okay. So, now apply this condition apply this here f t minus a f is continuous uh, differentiable. So, we can use this thing now. So, when you use this thing then this becomes g is differentiable. So, it is f t minus f x f t minus f x into g prime at some point by where it is continuous plus v s. Okay? That is what we get in use the this one condition. Then similarly for this uh, g of f x. So, when you write this thing the g of this difference g of this difference is this and this one s minus by s is our uh, f t f by is equal to f x g prime by plus b s this one we are getting this get it from 2 from 2. Okay. Now, apply the first use first f t minus f x is this. So, use first. So, it will be equal to t minus x f t minus f is t minus x into f prime x plus u t. This is our f t minus f x. We want this value. This value I am replacing by this and here this remains as it is say g prime by 
plus V s that is as it is is it not V s. Okay? Now, let us take this now. <coughs> so, if we if t is not equal to x then we divide by t divide by t minus x. So, when you divide by t minus x you are getting h t minus h x over t minus x is nothing but what a prime x plus u t u t into g prime by plus v s. Okay. Now, this will be equal to what? Taking the limit h t tends to x. So, when you go to the limit h t tends to x, the right hand side if I look, s t tends to a u is tending to 0 because of this condition is already given, f is differentiable at x. So, u t will go to 0 s t tends. So, this part will go to 0. Similarly, this part will go to 0. The right hand side will give f prime x g prime by and the left hand side is nothing but the derivative of the function at a point x. So, this implies that the derivative of this composite function g of f x with respect to x is the derivative of g with respect to f x then derivative of f x with respect to x that is what he shows. So, this proves the result. Okay? So, that is what. So, this is composite function which is very much helpful in getting the product. Okay? Now, let us take few examples where the differentiability is there. Okay? Suppose, I take the function f x equal to x square sin 1 by x when x is not equal to 0 and 0 when x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, when x is not equal to 0, what you are getting is the function is defined in this fashion. Now, x square is continuous function, it is also differentiable function, sin is a continuous and differentiable so far x is not equal to 0. So, we can directly apply the formula and when we take x is not equal to 0, when x is not equal to 0, you can directly apply the formula product of the two function and product of the two function will give the derivative of the first 2 x sin 1 by x and then the second function x square x square and the derivative of this is cos 1 by x into minus 1 by x square because this is a composite function now. So, derivative of sin as a function 1 by x is cos 1 by x, but 1 by x derivative is minus 1 by x square. So, it is a composite function. So, this is this holds when x is not equal to 0 that is the derivative of the function comes out to be 2 x sin 1 by x minus cos of 1 by x for x which is different from 0. Okay. But when x is 0, when x is 0, what happens? The derivative of the function we have to compute it. Why? Because at the point x is 0, when you are looking for the uh, uh, derivative, then the value at this point apply uh, the value which are different from x 0 is given by this form. So, find the derivative of this function at the 0 by using the uh, definition that is limit of this f x minus f 0 over x minus 0 x tends to 0. Okay. And that comes out to be what? f x is x square sin 1 by x minus 0 divided by x when x tends to 0. So, that is equal to basically limit of this x tends to 0 x sin 1 by x. Now, if we look that uh, term x sin 1 by x is always be dominated by mod x by mod x. So, basically when you are taking the mod of this mod of this then this is mod of this which is less than equal to mod of x limit x tends to 0 and this limit will always comes out to be 0. Okay? This limit comes out to be 0. Therefore, the limit of this exists and the derivative at the point 0 will be 0. 
Okay. <coughs> but what about the equation? Let it be this equation 3, this is 4. The function is differentiable. So, conclusion is the function f x defined by say here is star defined by star is differentiable throughout x belongs to r including x is 0, but, but the derivative of the function f x if you look the derivative is not continuous at x equal to 0. Why? Because when you take the derivative, derivative is involving is in, uh, involving cosine of 1 by x. So, when you take the limit as x tends to 0, the limit does not exist because limit of the cos 1 by x as x tends to 0 does not exist, which is available in 3 because use 3. Okay? Then we are getting so, when the function is differentiable, you cannot say that derived function remains continuous. It may not be continuous. If it is continuous, then there is a possibility of going further, is it not? But if it is not continuous, we cannot talk about the derivative. So, in this case, we cannot talk about the differentiability second derivative of the function at a point 0. Okay? If we look the f x is similarly sin x sin 1 by x, we will see in a similar way the limit does not exist. Similarly, example 2, if we take the function f x, x sin 1 by x, x is not equal to 0 and 0, then function is continuous. f is continuous because at 0 and, and also for all x belongs to all. In fact, continuity follows but not differentiable at x equal to 0. It is difference at rest of the point rest it is differentiable because when you take the derivative of x for x is different from 0 you can just apply the formula first function x derivative of this is cos 1 by x into minus 1 by x square then plus sin 1 by x. So, the derivative will come out to be minus uh, cosine 1 by x divided by 1 by x and then plus sin 1 by x when x is different from 0. But when you consider the derivative at a point 0, then as per the limit f x minus f 0 divided by x minus 0, x tends to 0. This comes out to be sin 1 by x minus 0 by x. Uh, uh, x sin 1 by x minus 0 limit x tends to 0 which turns out to be limit of 1 by x as x tends to 0 which does not exist. So, this function is third continuous function, but is not differentiable at the point 0. It is differentiable at rest of the point, but not at the point 0. Okay? So, we can get now, there are certain mean value theorems which we will make use for that. So, before that let me see the definition again for the maximum minima, uh, local maximum local minima. This is already we discussed local maximum or local minima. Uh, let f be a, let f be a real function. Define on define on a metric space on a metric space x t. We say then f has a local maxima or local maximum at a point. P belongs to capital X if there exists a delta greater than 0 such that f of q is less than or equal to f of p for all 
for all for all q belongs to x satisfies the condition with the condition the distance from p distance of q and p is less than delta distance of this is less than delta. So, this is <coughs> it means what is the local mean suppose this is our <coughs> x t a metric space and p is a point we say the function attains a local maxima at this point if there exists some positive number delta and a neighborhood around the point p such that if we pick up any arbitrary point q here then value of the function at this point q should remain is remain less than or equal to p then we say the function attains the local maxima at this point okay just for example if we take the function say f x equal to say suppose uh, this function I will say uh, x when lying between 0 less than equal to x less than half and say equal to 1 minus x when x is uh, say half and say 1 ok less than 1. So, what this function is if we look the function uh, f x equal to x between 0 and half the function is defined like this at the point half the function is again half. So, it attains the value here and then 1 it is again 0. Okay. Now, if I look the point half what is the character of the half, point half if we take any neighborhood around this point with a positive delta say half minus delta half plus delta this interval if I choose then the value of this uh, of any point here in this neighborhood will be somewhere here or somewhere here which is less than the value at the point half this is the value of the function at a point half. So, we say half is a point corresponding to a local maxima of this function f the same definition continue for a local minima local minima minimum uh, we say a function f has a local minima at a point at a point say p belongs to x if there exist a delta greater than 0 such that f of q is greater than or equal to f of p for all q belongs to x with the condition the distance from q and p is less than delta. So, this is the local minima for this point. Okay. Now, we will continue with the main theorem next time is this all. Thank you.